everyone. I hope you enjoyed designing your clay animals. Today, we're going to practice making patterns in Play-Doh to get you ready for using the clay when you come back to school. So hopefully you have got some Play-Doh left over from your free flow lesson with Miss McCarthy. And what I want you to do is have a look around your house for different objects that you might be able to use to create patterns in your Play-Doh. Think carefully about the animal that you've chosen as well. So I've chosen a turtle and I'd like lots of dots on mine. So I'm going to be exploring how I can make lots of dots. But I also want to see what kind of pattern these objects make as well. Now I've chosen a knife to help me cut into different um, sized pieces. If you're using a knife, make sure that you've got a grown-up with you. So I'm going to start with the Lego piece. Let's see what kind of pattern I can make using this. Okay, it shows up quite nicely. This might be good if you were doing some scales. It might be good if you're doing a fish or a reptile. Let's try a pencil. A pencil might be good for doing some eyes. I've got a plastic fork. And I've also got a straw. A straw would also be good for an animal with scales. <clears throat> so what I want you to do now is have a look around your house and see what patterns you can make in your Play-Doh. I've decided that when I come to do the eyes on my Play-Doh turtle, I'm going to use the pencil. And I think for the dots around the edges, I will probably use the straw. And what's nice about the Play-Doh and the clay, you'll find, is if you make a mistake, you can quite easily rub it off and do it again. So your job for today is to get your Play-Doh, get some different tools from around the house, make some patterns in your Play-Doh. I'd like to see some pictures. And then also have a think about how you're going to make the patterns that you have included on your design. I'll look forward to seeing your patterns on tapestry. Bye.